Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Mother Bench. Part two now of the build of this beautiful ICM Sikorsky CH54A Tarhi. And uh, yeah, it's going to be really, really nice. The plastic is beautiful, the fit's really good. So, really, really happy. So, um, moving on to part two. When I left you on part one, we got all the cockpit parts all sort of glued together and off the sprue, whatever, built into sub assemblies. Got the seats all done. Um, in the meantime, I've gone on and had a look, and we can see this part here, A7, is actually the roof of the cockpit. Now, I found this 360 degree thing on um, on Google Images, and it looks like the roof, as I think I mentioned before, is padded uh, with like a light grey or vinyl looking padding, almost like a, like a kind of tent material, if you like. Um, so... Basically, I've got those bits off the sprue, and then when you look over here, when you go forward to step 35, you can see you're adding these control consoles, the overhead ones, to the front. Now, if you're going to paint all this and have it all nice and everything, I think we really need to get that built together. As you know, I like to do sub-assemblies. So what I've actually done, I've got the roof, here it is here, and I've glued on those two parts, as you can see, so we're good to go on that. Um, I haven't put the levers on for fear of breaking them off. The other thing I've noticed is they're telling you here in the instructions in step 22 to glue together that piece, the roof, then you've got this main under section, then you've got this main under section of the tail. So you're going to end up with this very long piece of unwieldy plastic. And then they're telling you to go on and build up the winch. And then they're telling you to add the winch in between these um, side members here and then add these pieces here and have these people go on and in the meantime all of that is drying and then when you come along to fit this section here with these vertical parts going in if you find you've got a twist or a bow or it's you know whatever um i think it's going to cause you an issue so i would prefer and what i'm going to do is change the build sequence slightly so what i've done here i've said 29a so what i'm going to do is glue those three together when we're ready to put that in so i'm basically going to do all of this get all this done and then glue that together so that when this goes on because this here is a straight piece of plastic what's well, got a kick on the end but basically it's a straight piece of plastic this is going to be a rigid sort of um unit and we can glue that down onto there into all those recesses and make sure that everything lines up nicely i've got something under there so um so yeah basically you can imagine if i took this panel here and the front panel it was Instead of being straight, it was like that. It, it would be all sorts of bowing and clamping it all up and everything. I'd rather just glue it all together there. So that's what I'm going to do there. Um, that's going to be a very, very strong sub-assembly. It's going to be extremely rigid. So we're going to have to make sure we keep this all square when we build this. Um, so there we are, ready to go there. So that's what I've done, as I say. Sort of moved ahead a bit and got those consoles glued on. Now, as far as the painting goes, I've primed everything, sanded out any marks, gone over primer again, and then done some pre-shading. So here we can see the actual cockpit floor itself. And as you can see on here, I've done some pre-shading with some white. I used some MRP white primer. Now, I've noticed a couple of issues. Uh, this is in no means rivet counting or moaning or whatever. But I've noticed that they're telling us here in the instructions to paint all of this A, which is rubber black. Now, from what I can see on the images I'm seeing, the floor is actually grey, but the areas where the feet will go, it looks like it's painted with like a rubberized paint. Um, so this area here will be black, and the area around the rudder pedals underneath the pilot's feet will be black, but all the rest of the floor is grey. This area here is black. Uh, it seems wherever somebody steps, where you need some grip, it's going to be painted black. I didn't notice the step, I'll have to have a look. Um, and then we'll do some chipping on that and sort of wear the paint away with some silver paint. But basically this area here um, is covered in rivets uh, and the, the rivets are showing through where the, where the people's feet have been. So that would be something if you're going to super, de super detail. As it, obviously, as I say, because this is potentially the, a, a build for ICM, it's not for ICM, but I'm doing it for ICM to show what can be built out of the box without adding any extras as I said I was going to add seat belts I'm not going to I'm not this is going to be built completely out of the box the only thing I will change is perhaps part of the assembly sequence and also some of these colors because I'm not 100% in agreement with the colors they're calling out so uh, that'll be the only changes I'll make but if you are going to super detail it I would certainly add some rivet detail down there 
because you've got a lot of glazing on here and as we've said it's very very clear this area here this area here it looks like there should be a step because you've got this huge step from there to there it should be sort of cut away in this area here sort of probably I don't know 10 12 millimeters and then sort of halfway down so it sort of steps down so, it's, so that you can come in here and then step up onto there to get up to there so um that's something that's been missed out in the design of the kit um other than that it all looks good now you can see i've done this pre-shading with like a sort of blotchy look to it that is basically because the inside of the cockpit is absolutely covered in lattice work aluminium members and rivets and plating and this stiffeners and ribs i mean this if, if Edward want to go to town on this, they could make a hell of a set, probably charge quite a lot of money for it. But you could actually really make this interior pop. For instance, this back wall, uh, there's all sort of ribs and structures going on here. There's vertical ribs up here. Um, there's a fire extinguisher mounted on there as well. The backs of the seats have a sort of a strengthening structure on there, which is which is missing in the kit. So um, it kind of looks like it was going to have a lot of photo etch and for some reason it hasn't um maybe their photo etch supplier has failed or whatever i, I don't know but um i mean it's beautiful as it is and it's going to be beautiful out of the box but uh i think there's a lot of room for improvement in this cockpit with uh, with aftermarket so um there you go or if you want to go scratch building you know you can go to town i mean it, all on the sides here there's all these there's this rib structure and everything and down here it's like double skin with all pressed you know um, flanged holes and everything in there it's just absolutely covered in structure if you like so um, i'm trying to sort of make that structure appear sort of so when you look through the glazing rather than just seeing a gray canvas you're going to see this sort of i don't know this sort of structure there if you like something that, that represents i don't know we'll see it might look bloody awful um on the roof I've done this sort of thing here because I'm going to spray it a slightly lighter grey um, after I've done the, the normal grey and sort of give it that, I don't know, baggy look if you like. Um, it's just playing with paint really rather than doing any super detailing because as I say, this is out of the box. So um, yeah, and as far as this painting here goes, uh, these gaiters down here from what I can see, these gaiters at the bottom, they're like a very light grey colour, like a light grey vinyl sort of colour. Um, the shafts here are grey and then the ends are black. Uh, this gator here is black. We've got the gators down here, which I think are that same sort of silvery aluminium colour. I didn't notice the gators on the rudder pedals. I must check that out. The rudder pedals themselves appear to be light grey. The fans appear to be light grey. So basically we just spray all that rubber black and then go in with a brush and paint everything. So a light grey colour, you know, from the, um, from the wet palette. Um, this area down here, as I say, this is all black. And then when it gets to here, it's grey under the seat. Uh, this is obviously all grey. So um, what I'm going to do is I'll go on and paint it. And then you can see what colours I've painted. And if you agree or disagree, whatever, then uh, then so be it. Um, and if you've got any different references to me, then please let me know. Um, I'm going to spray it in XF60, XF53. Uh, I was going to use XF66, but looks a little bit too light xf54 looks a little bit too dark this i think this is going to be a good color for it so um i'll thin this within an inch of its life and then spray it on very thinly and just keep going to, to get that sort of that, that blotchiness just to show through um i've also done the roof here because the roof goes inside um it's sort of part of the cockpit so you can see i've done that and done some highlighting there so we'll paint the roof walls to see some highlighting um, it's telling you to paint these consoles black i think they're gray on the sides and just black on the faces it's very strange we have a decal for this panel here that you're hardly going to see but no decal for this panel here we have a decal for the instrument panel so this is all going to have to be painted as i've said before in part one i'm going to put the decals on see how they look if they don't look any good we'll get them off with a bit of sellotape and just um dry brush it and perhaps pick up some details and that but um I want to go as much as I can out of the box. So, you know, if they say use the decals, I'm going to try and use the decals. So I'm going to get some painting done and then I'll come back and uh, we'll see how it all looks. And there we go. Um, all painted, as you can see, we've got the, the white showing through on there. It's actually showing a little bit more than it does in real life on the camera. It kind of looks more pronounced on the camera. 
but uh, you see the same aside on there. It's just to try and break up that sort of just that flat grey sort of surface. You see it on the back wall there. And um, I can't remember if I explained this before, but there's there's all sorts of ribbing going on here. Lots of lots of uh, you know um, sheet material. I've done the actual floor here. You can see I've done the the uh, the uh, tire black, rubber black around here and on the front, and then the patch in the middle. Um, done the black gator on the um, collective there, and then also done the the handles on this on the cyclic and the collective. Painted those fans grey, painted the rudder pedals grey, and the actual gators around the bottom of the um, various levers there. They're done with uh, white, and then I've gone over with a very very thin silver just to give them that sort of nylon kind of look, which is what they look to be made of. I was kind of thinking they would be leather or you know felt or something like that or you know um suede or something but uh of course this is 1960s so you kind of forget that uh but i've, I've got the, the the image i've got is from a um a tar hay a, a ch54b not an a so um but uh, the pictures i've got all look the same but uh the, the best one i've got is this 360 degree thing so uh, yeah very very nice happy with how that's come out painted the silver runners as well just to try and add a bit of interest then the seats you can see the seats here, then the uh, the cushions in the green XF62 as they requested in the instructions, and then the um, the back seat there for the third pilot. That's all done as well, and I painted that with XF62. I actually thinned the paint with this, which is the Modeler's World Leveling Thinner for brush painting, which turns Tamiya paint into like Viejo. It's it's awesome stuff. This is you get it from premium hobbies if he's got any stock. I know he's having trouble with getting modelers world in stock, uh, but yeah, the um, it, it just brushes on. It's beautiful. So I'm going to give all this a gloss coat now, um, purely to seal it in, to give a good base for the decals to go down because we've got a decal to go on here, and we've got a decal to go on the main instrument panel. It's strange that there's no decal to go on there. You have a decal to go on here on an area which isn't going to be seen. And yet this, which is right in the middle of the cockpit, doesn't have a decal. So very strange, but we'll deal with all that. But the reason I want to give it a gloss coat is to seal it all in. And then any further washes or whatever I do won't soak into the paint. So I'm going to give it a coat of this one. This is Aqua Gloss. This is now um, called A-Stand from uh, MIG Ammo. So um, yeah, this is a 120 ml bottle. Only the big ammo are only doing a thirty mil bottle, so unfortunately it's uh, it's not quite as um, it's not going to be as economical to use. But um, they're they're supposed to be sending me some for a trial, but they've actually said they don't have any in stock, so I don't know quite what's going on there. But um, there we go. So uh, I'm going to get this clear coated, and then we'll come back and perhaps do the decals and some weathering. So that's all done now. That's gloss coated with the aqua gloss, and uh, as you can see, it's still drying but we've uh, all sealed in now so when we put any washes on there it's a little bit dusty as well which is a shame but uh, never mind I want to take this opportunity to apologize if this video seems a little bitty uh, maybe not the usual sort of thing or whatever but um, those who know me know that my little dog Jess has had a, a pretty major operation and at the moment I'm sort of in the middle of looking after her but I want to get these videos out so I'm not really getting much sleep at all, so I'm not really into it, if you like. I'd rather be just laying down, to be honest. But um, rest assured, I will push ahead. But uh, yeah, if it seems a bit, um, if I seem a bit different, shall we say, that's why. Don't worry, nothing else is wrong. Um, and I'm sure that she's making a, a wonderful recovery. I'm sure she'll be absolutely fine in a few days. And we'll be back to normal by sort of part four, perhaps. We shall see. But uh, I'm just going to push ahead and get this done and, um, and, uh, and, and hopefully she'll just get better in the meantime. Right, so here we go. Everything's gloss coated. Everything's dry. You can see it's all got a bit of a sheen to it now. So now I can use some washes or whatever to add a bit of, uh, bit of just a bit of interest to it because it's, it's such a large area with big open spaces and stuff. So we're going to have a go with these decals. The first one I'm going to do is this one here because this is the one that's the least visible. So if the... If it doesn't go well, then it's fine that we, if we're going to mess one up, that's the best one to mess up. So just dip that in the water there, and then we'll get some micro set. 
and brush that onto there put plenty on there because it's going to really need to go down um, micro set and sole are my favorite decal setting solutions I do have MIG ammo kindly sent me their their own solutions I haven't tried them yet I must try them actually on some scrap decals because I don't want to find out how to use them or you know the good and bad on a good model not you know especially not one like this so uh they're taking a little bit of what time to free up there we go let's go in now the um which you see me do the great war hobby um me323 i'm working on in part three i think or was it part two i did the decals i can't remember now but uh my god those decals were they didn't they, they were like left in the water for like 10 minutes and they still wouldn't come off come off the paper so this is gonna go is it this way round? I've forgotten which way the pattern is now. Yes, it's going to go that way round. So I'm going to get some more micro set on there because I want it, I want it wet. I want it to have plenty to work with so that it goes down. Right, so we'll slide that off onto there. And then we can just position it with our tweezers. And we'll see how it reacts to the micro set and sole before we decide how to proceed I guess I'm gonna put it right back kind of hoping that it's gonna settle down over those knobs and that knob will be in the right place never use a cotton bud that you find on the bench always grab a new one I've got these that the lovely Simon cousin sent me thank you Simon these are the wooden ones so they're a lot more rigid than the, the ordinary Johnson's ones, They're much better. So hopefully that will all go down. And then as the instructions say, which is something a lot of people don't do, I'm gonna put some micro set over the top of the decal. Decal, whatever you wanna call it. I call them decals. And somebody has asked me in the comments, um, I can't remember which video it was on now, but somebody has asked me if I can show them how you weather down um, <clears throat> PE, like like Edward color, fo color photo etch instrument panels and stuff. And I'm sure I've done it in one of my videos. If you if you've seen me do it and you know it's in a certain video, please put it in the comments below. If not, I'm going to have to do it again. But um, yeah, I've, I know I've done it. Because like, like this, this is very, very garish. I'm going to sort of knock it back, I think. But it depends how well it goes down over the knobs and everything as to how, how I can do it. But that is going down beautifully. I can see already it's going down. It's really, really nice. The way it's responding to this jollop. So yeah, lovely. Okay, so I'm going to let that go, let that dry out, and then what I'll do is play with it some more and get some microsole on it, and we'll see how it goes. I'll be back when it's done. Well, I must say, these things have gone down beautifully. I don't know if you can catch that there, but they've gone down beautifully. They're slightly out of kilter with the actual parts. Um, you can see here, these the, the, the things line up lovely at this end, and as you go forward, they sort of become more back towards me. Um, but uh, it's, it's absolutely fine. They've gone down really, really nicely. And I've actually gone over them with micro set and sole. And I'm able to roll them down like this without any problems. So, you know, really, really nice. Uh, I kind of wish they'd done one for the centre console here. But they haven't. They've only done one for the instrument panel. And as you can see, that one's going down beautifully. And it all lines up lovely with what's moulded on there. So really, really impressed with these. And you've got one here for these three gauges, which again line up beautifully. And then there's one there which goes around that joystick. And they have gone down and pulled down over all the detail, which is absolutely perfect. So, if you have this kit, and like me, you can't wait to build it. Um, and you don't want to build it out of the box like I do. I want to build this out of the box. You'd be making your own seat belts and stuff. And you might want to add some placards and some decals. So if that's the case, you've got two companies you can go to with this, Airscale, that do generic stuff, but it's generally 
World War II stuff they do, but they do a range of um, decals and um, photo etch gauges. Go look at the website, airscale.com or airscale.co.uk, I can't remember now. But um, yeah, they do a, a whole load of generic things. Uh, you know, you could you could completely make an instrument panel, but I'm not sure if they do this sort of period. I think it's only World War II stuff. I'll have to look myself. I'm not sure if it does later stuff. I've got some here um, that I can show you. Here's the air scale stuff here. So you can see World War II Allied cockpit placards. And then there's instrument panels for the Hellcat. Got some odd decals there, which I have to go in the bag. And then we've got World War II instrument dials, World War II cockpit placards, um, instrument dial decals. And then we've got an instrument panel set there for a 124th Mosquito. And then Luftwaffe. And then you've got this, these things here as well, which are the, the photo etch ones. So it's all basically, I think, pretty much World War II. I'm not sure that he does anything later. But if you want the later stuff, this company here, Anise, okay, Anise.io, you will have seen me review some of his things in the past. And these are absolutely wonderful. Now these are placards and symbols for all sorts of bits and pieces in your in your weapons bays or your undercarriage bays or whatever. I'm going to turn this light off because of the glare. So um, we've got that one there. And then here we've got modern day seatbelt buckles. So I could make some belts for this and use these buckles. But because I'm doing it out of the box, I'm not going to add seat belts. Then we've got here, we've got um, seat belt stitching. These are uh, black. And you can see we've got the, the straight lines for the stitching. And then we've got the webbing at the ends. And you can see that's the sort of thing you're going to do. And then these are the seat belt stitches in white. So it's the same thing, but in white. And then you've got universal placards and symbols. So, you know, they're just all different sizes. So just choose whatever size fits your scale the best. And then you've got the, the rotary knob symbols and everything there. And you've got your yellow hatches and everything. So you can go around and stuff. I mean, the sky, and there's loads of them in there. You can see you've got lots of decals in there. And then there's universal labels and stencils in black. So that's your universal boxes there. You've got the radial ones there. And then these go around your switches and knobs. And then you've got here. You've got more, more uh, stencils and labels again. And then here we've got universal labels and stencils in white. So you can see there, you can hardly see them on the paper, but there they are. So you can go to town and he also does, I don't have them to hand right now, but he also does 3D printed, um, sorry, resin, 3D resin printed uh, knobs and buttons and everything. And you can see you can make, you know, he does this. This is a, actually there's a card here. And you can see that he does all of this. So you can actually make an instrument panel just like that using his resin parts and the, and the decals. That's what all that is. So you can go to town and really, really go to town and make your your instrument panels and everything really, really pop. Now, because I'm doing this out of the box, I'm not going to start adding belts and stuff to it because it's going to really seriously enhance the look of it. And I don't want to sort of put pictures up of the model and it sort of, makes people think that that's what they're getting because it's not. What I think I might do though is on this floor here there is um, th there's riveting on the floor and obviously the, foot the footfall in there has worn the paint off the rivet so the rivets stand out in silver, silver. and I remembered I've got these things you've got the the HGW free lines I'm not sure they're called this anymore but they're basically positive rivets and they're hardly positive at all but they're I think they'd be quite good for doing this. So I've cut some into strips and they're very unusual the way they work. Um, you, you sort of put them down like a normal decal and then you peel the foil off the top after a few hours. So I think I might put some down on here just to see how they look. I may end up painting over them because of this out of the box thing. But I just want to see how they go and, um, and give you guys an idea of how they work. So let's get some water down here. Let's see how this goes. Let's see if we can make this work. So that one's going to go across. So put them in water just like a normal decal. And then I'm going to grab my cockpit floor. Let's put the light back on so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got my brush here. I'm going to use some micro set. I'm not sure whether you're supposed to use set and sole with these or not. I'm going to grab my tweezers. And see if this is ready to go yet. So just remember, these are the HDW free lines. Um, I think they're called positive deck, positive rivets now. 
um, the beauty of the reason of using these is because they're silver and the whole idea with them you're actually supposed to paint over them and then give them a gentle rub so they show through I will probably use some of these actually on the back of my Lancaster where the uh, where the rivets are non-existent it's all about the pitch you see that's the that's the main thing they do the different scales as well so obviously the different scale gives you a different size river and a different pitch so let's get some microset down on here this one's going to go across there's sort of one going across and then there's four going four and a half I just want to see how they go really I know this is like I say this is supposed to be an out of the box build but it's not for competition purposes let's get this spike out of here it's not for competition purposes it's just for seeing how the model looks as I said I could always paint over them but I thought you guys might like to see how these things look and how they work and it's a little plug for HGW as well Although I bought these, I haven't had anything free off of HGW. So that's going to go across like that. And then we can grab a cotton bud. Move them. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. I just want to make sure they're, they're straight and square. So I'm going to just straighten those up. I can make sure that's square to there. It's not quite square, look. So I'm going to move it over so I can get some water. Brush some water on there. I should be able to then move them over. Grab the end there and just pull it over a bit. Whoops, that's not supposed to happen. It's good to make sure you've got plenty of water. If you're moving decals around, have plenty of water for them to float on. Float, float on. It's a good old song that was, wasn't it? There we go, that's square there. So I'm going to try and roll this down without moving it. There we are. I need to make a chisel end on that cotton bud so I can push that down into that corner. Just like so. And you can see there we've got our rivets on the ground. And then after a couple of hours we can just lift them off. So I've got ones to go across this way as well, but obviously I've got to leave this for a few hours to dry before I can peel the top off, otherwise I won't be able to peel the tops off the, um, the others because I'll be laying them down on top of that. So um, I'm going to let that dry for a few hours and then I will come back to it and see how we go. But you can see now it's given you a, a look of how it goes. Um, like I say, out of the box, but not really because I want to see how these look. We might actually just paint over them, see how they look. I can just feel the sort of rivety texture on them. I think what I'll do is I'll put some more microset down over the top. I don't know if it's going to help at all because it's not the, the decal film's coming off, isn't it? So, but I thought you might like to see how they work, and we'll use them in a future build. Right. See you in a minute. Hey, so it's only been about half an hour, and I thought I'd give it a go, and I can actually. Peel this away, as you can see there. Ah, one's come away. Never mind, that's where I put one across there anyway. So you can see one's come away, but the rest have all stayed down lovely. So we've got rivets down there now. So now we can put one in. So I've got four cut here, and two are longer and two are shorter. So we can put, get that one wet. I'm not sure if we need the micro set or not, but I'm going to use it. Just to aid the adhesion. And you can see that film comes away and then we're left with just the rivets, which is far better than the micro scale ones. The only trouble is with these, they're not as pronounced. So like where I've got damaged rivets on the skin, I can't use these because they're not very pronounced. But I might see if I can use the um, micro scale ones. And I was talking to a friend the other day and he said that apparently if you run Tammy extra thin over them, it gets rid of the neck or film. So uh, I will give that a go. So we have our and they're not ready to go yet. So I'll get one of these short ones wet as well as get some more water. Get that wet. And 
then we've got another long one and another short one so we'll let them get wet and then just let them sit there and then we can get them on so you've seen me do this already that one's ready to go so we're going to get this onto here that micro set is dried out it must be warmer in here than i think it is We'll slide that underneath there, just like so. And then we can move this one into position and get that to line up where that rivet is missing. There we go, you can see that one on there now. We've got this rivet type floor on here. So we'll just, oh, as soon as you start rolling these, they move. Maybe I'll get one of my Johnson's cotton buds. Is it soft? Yeah, it just wants to move around. Look. I think what I'll do is just put it in position and leave it alone. Or let it get itself stuck down and then. And then roll it down. And I know that some of you will be saying, you're supposed to be building out of the box while you're putting them down. I just wanted to see what they look like. And I wanted to show you guys because, because I can. <laughs> there you go. So anyway, I'll let them get, on get the rest on and then I'll come back when we're ready to peel them off. So here we are moving on a bit now. We've got the uh, decals on there and you can see how those rivet decals look. They're, they're really, really good. And I know this has got to be out of box build, but I just didn't like that plain black floor. So I've, I just wanted to add something just to spruce it up. I've gone round and put some gloss in the, in the gauge faces, as you can see there by my finger. You can see they're glossy and on there. And I've also now done the instrument panel. So I put some gloss, gloss in them so they get nice and shiny when they catch the light so that's really good and then we've got the um the center console there and i've just fictitiously cut it in some of the buttons give it a bit of a dry brush and there we are so um i think i'll probably give that another wash with some black and that'll really make that pop so there we go i've painted the back here <clears throat> black just brush painted it when it's in there it can't really be seen this sort of goes like this so you can see that you know you, you can't really see a lot up in there but um Certainly when I build my other one, I will be adding cables and stuff. I've also been looking at these seats. The seats are fairly basic. Um, they're, they're the correct sort of shape, but they are fairly basic. There's a lot missing um, detail-wise. But obviously, um, ICM have wanted to get this kit out, and they have produced what they have. The after, they probably know the aftermarket will jump all over it. But as we know, with many helicopters, you know, the seats... Uh, the seats require a bit of, a bit of work um, so there we go that's all going together now I mean you you will hear me raise a couple of issues about this kit as we go through and it's in no we no means um, detrimental to ICM I'm just you know a lot of people say we should have kits and be grateful and I'm not generally of that ilk um, you know a manufacturer produces a kit at the end of the day to make money they don't produce it to out of the goodness of their hearts um, but I think in this situation, you know, for this kit to be produced in in the middle of what's going on, I think it's absolutely incredible. And I just take my hat off to them every day for it. It's just amazing. So, um, you know, it could well be that they thought we need to get this bloody thing out and start, you know, pulling in some cash or whatever. I don't know. But um, it's it's certainly very, very nice. I mean, just some seat belt. I just wish it had some seat belts. If it had some seat belts, it would be absolutely fine. Um... But, you know, if you want to go to town, if you're really fussy about it, I'm sure there's going to be aftermarket seats coming along. All, um, or at least some Edward photo, actually, you can add to, to sort of spruce it all up. So um, the rest of it is, I mean, all the external detail, and that is absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to have to get this glued on. I'm going to do some dry brushing on the back of there. And I'm also going to put some sort of flat varnish to get rid of this glossiness around these joysticks and stuff and then I think I'll probably dry brush something around the buttons but just basically playing with it really just trying to improve it but you can see how it looks there it's uh it's not bad but, um 
as I say, I'm doing this out of the box, so it's, it, it is what it is. Right, so um, I'll get some dry brushing done, get some matte varnish on, and then I'll be back. And we're back. So, our cockpit is basically done. Now, I've got the instrument panel glued in. You can see I just dry brushed around the back of those gauges and stuff. So, as I say, if you go in super detail in, loads of cables all coming down and running into a conduit. So, look bloody great. Um, so... We're ready to go. I've removed paint from this area around here and from around the front and everything. Just going to quickly just take a bit more away from there. Let's see if there's still some paint. I want a nice strong joint. Now, if we look at the instructions, okay, we've done the actual build of the cockpit itself. We've got all this here added up. So we're now at this step, okay? And we're adding the front on here. Now, the reason they're telling you, I think, to add the front on is because it's the only part that has any real positive location. You can see we've got the edge of the floor here that's going to sit on that ledge in there and then over that sort of lump in the front, which is great. I've also scraped some paint away from there. So that will fit in there and you'll get a lovely, very snug, sort of almost clip together fit. It's really nice. OK, and you also end up with a little bit of the floor sticking up obviously to help support the glazing when it goes in so that's all good the other beauty of this one is I can hold this in place and I can get in behind with some cement get it clamped in place and that will be that done so we'll get that done now and of course the other thing is because we've got no real positive location anywhere on anything um, it's all going to be coming off of this front end and we have a the chance for a disaster here if we get this wrong so what I'm thinking is if I get this glued in solidly, if it's in the right place, brilliant. That's just what we want. OK, if it's in the wrong place, I can get in there with some more extra thin, soften the glue and manipulate it to suit. So I'm happy with how that's gone. And I'm not sure that even needs clamping in place because it just sits there so beautifully on its own. Now, you can see we've got all this raised rivet detail on here. And the raised rivet detail carries on onto the sides and everything as you've got here. So you can see the raised rivet detail there. Okay, you've got the same on here. It's, it's gorgeous. So when we put the sides on, we have got to basically get that in there, get that on there and get this all to meet up and join up. And then we've got a seam to deal with in between those rivets. Now, it looks like it's not going to be much work because it's beautifully done. And we've also got there, have a look at your kit, I don't know if it's going to be the same, but we have this, this ledge here where the floor goes is just protruding onto the front edge. You can probably just see it there. So I'm just going to, a couple of swipes. Just get rid of that. So... The plan is to be able to get these sides on. You can see the fit is very, very nice indeed. Now at the bottom, it's got a bit of a step. But that's okay. It's going to be fine. We will get around it. So the main thing is to get this area here perfect and then deal with that down there afterwards. So I'm going to sort of do this piecemeal just a bit at a time. Now that's going in under there. So that's all fitting well. It's fitting lovely there. It's fitting nice onto the side. I'm going to leave the top floppy because we're not putting the roof in yet until we have the main body on the back. Um, now, if I could just hold that in position, we've got this floor section going in, or belly section. As you can see, I've got a bit of an issue here where if I hold it square on the side, it's not square at the front. So, whoops, it's easy. That's how to break things. I'll be very careful just... These, these um, joysticks will be very easy to snap off. It looks like I've just damaged that one. It looks like it might want to snap off. I'm not too sure. That's okay. Um, so I have to be really, really careful. So we're going to get rid of the paint on here. Get rid of the paint down there. We'll get rid of the paint down there and across the bottom there and up there and then we'll do the same on the other side 
as you can see, this is need to be very, very careful with this because we could easily break something off. Tron was asking me a question in part one about building from the inside out and everything, and he's absolutely dead right. If you look at his comment, he's dead right. But I'm afraid at the moment, with all that's going on with Jess and everything, my mind is just not in the right place. So I may do some things that you think are a bit daft that even, you know, even I wouldn't normally do. But uh, don't worry about it. It's, I'll, I'll be back soon. So as I'll give you an idea of time, today is Thursday the 2nd of March. 2023 so gives you an idea of the timeline so that's going to go on the back there that fits lovely so should we concentrate on this side first and then we can get that back piece in um i don't think we have the same issue there we don't yes we do there's a slight step there so we've removed all the sprue nibs from there all the sprue nibs are gone from here so that's all good so we're ready to go. So that can go into there like so. Oops. As you can see, once again, we've got a lovely fit on the front. It needs to come out a touch. Now, if I try this floor, this belly section on here, how does it work out? Okay, that's working out lovely. There is slightly more curvature in this than there is in this. So that's going to take some matching, but that's not going to be so much of a problem. As you can see, it's all going to be pretty tricky, but we need to concentrate mainly on this area here, because underneath, unless somebody comes and picks your model up, they're not going to see it. But um, I'm just wondering if that floor will go down anymore, because I've got a bit of misalignment on that floor. I may actually put some tabs in here to help things along because that is literally just a butt joint on there as you can see mm. all right so this is going to be fun this is not going to be good for the beginner to do but uh, i'm sure that if you've got a couple of kits under your belt your manage this absolutely fine Let's remove some paint from there. That's the only place I know the floor is actually going to be. I think the rest of it, we're just going to have to put up with the paint, mix it with the glue. It does work. It glues absolutely fine, but it's just not quite as strong as it would be without the paint there. So I can hold that accurately in position like that. How's this back piece going to go with that there? Get that hole lined up in there. If you want to fast forward, guys, give it a fast forward because this might be a bit slow for you. I'm not sure if that's meant to butt, that's meant to go in behind there. Right, okay, so that's going to go in, into there and butt up to the edge of it. It looks like we might have a little bit of a fit issue just here at the bottom. I think what I'll do with this is get these sides on, get the, front, the bottom on, and go from there. In fact, what we might want to do is just start taping it all together, see how it looks. We won't be putting glue on with the tape in place because that's asking for trouble. It's got second-hand masking tape, which is useless. Let's grab a new piece. Just cut it in half. So we can put that one on there, like so. So that's gone like that, and then this one will go on this side. Get that up under the floor like that. There we are, that one's gone on there. The fit of that is just unbelievably good. Really, really good. So that's going to go like that. And then this floor, or this belly should I say, is going to slip in here. Hold it there so we don't pinch everything together at the front. So 
that's going to fall in like that and that fits beautifully so we are going to have a little bit of sanding to do I know that I'm going to grab some I'm going to see if I can stand that up like that there we go I'm going to grab some new masking tape and I'm keeping the camera on guys because I know some of you are going to want to see this particularly the newer modelers out there they want to see how I go around this so if it's not to your interest please just press the fast forward <coughs> excuse me right that's another nice thing about helicopters isn't it generally no undercarriage bays just a hole to stick a leg into I'll tell you what I'm going to do here I'm going to tape it to this side first Come on there. The trouble is you can't put any pressure on the tape because it's all just going to fall apart if you do. Wow, this is this is. You need nine hands for this. All these rivets are stopping this tape working. If we get it roughly held together, then we can go for it. There we go, so there's the front of our sky crane. Looking very, very business like, I hope you'll agree. Looks very nice indeed. And then that roof panel is going to go in there. You can see that's going to fit beautifully as well. So that's all good. Here we are there is our sky crane front end by golly is that beautiful it looks absolutely stunning so right and that roof panel is going to fit in here like that so you can see now when you look inside the cockpit that's what you can see so there we go right so let me have a play with this and then I'll come back when I see when I've got it all done. Right, a few hours later now, um, I've actually glued a piece of plastic card in the bottom of here. I, I put a curve on it. If you don't have any plastic card, you can use the tabs off your sprues. I'll show you here if I get one of my sprues out. Um, you'll have the tabs on there with the letter. Robbie, here you see you've got this tab here with the letter D on it. You can cut that off sand it flat and use that it, you just it's just something there just so you've got as you can see now when I put this four piece in you saw me this belly piece I, I keep I kept having a trouble aligning it but now you can see I can easily align that there perfectly without having to worry about any sort of flopping about so what I've done there is actually as I say clamp that in place let that dry cut the pegs I've put some glue around there let that all dry hard so if if need be that can be moved but um got a little bit of glue oozage there you can possibly see I'm not gonna worry about that because I'm hoping the clear part in the frame will cover that up if it doesn't we'll have to sand that and do a repair because it's uh it's well it's, it's probably not probably a bit of matte varnish would hide it actually anyway um so I've been allowed a nap as I say because I'm not sleeping at night because staying up with Jess and that I'm not getting much sleep at all um what I've decided to do it's quite difficult this because there's no real location pins or slots or anything around here which I'm more than happy with how the way they designed it because they just tend to cause problems when you've got you know all these multi-part assemblies which determine where everything goes um, so what I've decided to do is actually glue the front so what I'm going to do is cement oh the other trouble I was going to say that the problem is you can't really tape it all together because the raised river detail just pushes the tape away so it's very difficult so what I'm going to do is glue together this front seam here so I get a perfect join there like that okay and then let that go solid so what we'll do there is we'll probably hold it in place 
maybe even tack it with a drop of super glue for an instant sort of tack and then we don't want to be gluing up with super glue because it may crack we want to use a weld action glue in there and then we can work on that joint but we want to get it as good as we can so what I might do is use some thin super glue and just play with it until we can get it right um, and then once it's actually held in the right position like that then I will go in from behind put some liquid cement in there so we get a nice solid joint I'm not going to glue it here so the floor will still be able to move around like that in there I'm just going to have it glued at the front and I think I'll do the same on both sides and then we can come in and get the belly piece in and then this rear piece I think we might have an issue with the fit on here it goes up against this this side panel here and I think we may have a bit of an issue with the fit there you can see where it kind of comes around and it's, it looks like we need to take some material off of this but um, I don't really want to start doing anything until it's all glued in place because we may find that when we come to put it it does actually fit perfectly but if we need to we can always carve some of that away once it's dry and we can put a clamp around here to hold it all in place so what I'm going to do is as I said I'm going to clamp I'm going to get that glued in place with a drop of super glue let it get so it's, uh, so it's tacked in place and then get the wild action in there so if you want to see me do that then I'll turn the camera off and back on once I've got some glue dispensed if you don't want to see me do that fast forward right so it looks like black glue it's not it's the um this is the ASK art scale kit thin super glue and I'm just putting a drop there I just literally want this to tack into place at the top like that so hopefully that will actually take yes it has brilliant that's what you want from an instant super glue sometimes you don't want instant sometimes you want properly proper instant so there we go so that's gone in there nice like that so that's glued at the top and now on the bottom I need to manipulate it a little bit to make it go to the right position that I, where I want it. It's like the, the, the bottom has got a slightly too tight a curve on it. So I'm just going to push this side in. Okay, just like so. Whilst we pull this down. As I say, if you don't want to see this fast forward, but I think there are some people that want to build this kit this might be quite handy for them to see how I go about it because it could be that you can see that we've got a perfect join there so I'm going to take a drop of this super glue and just scrape it in behind in that corner and just hold that in place as you can see the seam we've got there is nigh on perfect So that is now tacked in place and we have a very we have a tiny step going up here which can be scraped away that won't be an issue but I'm hoping that that's going to come out beautifully you can see I have got room to push that in you can see I can push this light a bit dimmer you can see there I can push that in there you go that's better I can push that in and actually get rid of it completely so what I'm going to do there is put a drop of this glue in the back and then instantly come around here and push that in there we go I was nearly too slow oh, I've just broken the seat away now well done Nigel this is probably grabbing things to hold them and <laughs> always quite awkward I'm kind of wondering if you could do this with just the floor and make up this kind of shell that you could then put over the floor once your cockpit is done and it would save you having to risk breaking everything like I've just done so there we go so that is that like that that is now clipped into place basically clipped into place using super glue as a tack welder you will see you could probably get away with just bloody paint priming and painting that it's that good
it looks like a join there because you've got the difference in the colours with the paint, but I just put my finger in the super glue behind. There we go. So that's that tacked in. Right. So now we're not going to worry about this at the back or anything. We're going to leave that. So now we can come in with some Wild Action Tamiya Extra Thin. Get that in there. And just let that do its thing. Weld it all together. So that, my friends, if you are for any to the hobby, that is how you deal with something. When you want, when you have no real alignment and you have to get it together, you sort of, it's almost like if you imagine fabricating, if you were, if this was sheet metal, you would clamp it in place, boom, tack weld it, clamp it in place, tack weld it, and then once it's all nice and flush, you'd probably dress it, get it all nice, and then you'd completely weld it in sections, obviously, because you get distortion otherwise. But basically, you can see that's how we've done that. And I'm going to put some more in there because I want to make sure we've got a really good, very strong weld. And then we know we can pull it around without any risk of it breaking open. Again, this is going to be a fairly time consuming part of the build because you need the patience to just leave it and then move on. Um, because if I start pulling this around now, obviously the joint's just going to break apart. So there we are. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. Let it all dry and then I'll come back and we'll see what we're going to do next. Right, so um, that's been a good hour or so now. And what I've done in here, I don't know if you can see down in there, I've actually backed it up with some of that black VMX, VMX, VMS, um, thin black super glue. It's absolutely wonderful stuff. Something else I've discovered, which is quite interesting. This, all this black on here is VMS super glue, which is all dried. When I put that thin normal super glue on top, look what happened. It's melted what's underneath it and we've now got regurgitated VMS glue. So I don't know how that's, I'll have to do a test of that sometime. So anyway, um, I've also gone around with the, th the thin black VMS and gone into these joints here where these joints are going to be. Basically because they're going to take a lot of careful work to get rid of and then not disturb the rivets if, if, if we can help it. Um, so I only want to do it once. The trouble is with Mr. Surfacer, as you know, it will kind of sink back over time. And also if I decide to go in with a sort of heavy-ish coat of primer so I can sort of sand it back and just get rid of any imperfections, it will make that seam reappear. So that's why I'm using the super glue there rather than Mr. Surfacer. So uh, I, I would advise anyone does the same because we all know, you know, it will come, the seam will come back. So we've got this belly piece going in now. So that is going to sit in there. So what I'm tempted to do is glue the front first because the rest of it needs to be pulled about to sit nicely. So I'm tempted to glue the front in first and then when the glue's gelled off, just tape it down. I should be able to get the tape to hold on there. Um, so we get a nice seam there and then we can pull it around because we've got to pull that side in. The floor is all going to be floating around as you can see because we that's how we need it to be. We don't want to glue the floor to anything yet because I've realized that the floor there's this piece here that goes in the back okay and that piece there sits against that floor against that radius and against that railing and you can see if I can get it in the camera you can see this railing here okay if I if I pull the floor and push the floor you can see how the railing changes angle with relation to this back wall so that's going to push that piece out if we glue the floor in the wrong place so a lot of careful sort of thought going on here um i think maybe it would have been advantageous to have like a, a ledge in there a sort of l-shaped ledge that you could push push the corner of this up into so you know you're in the right position there um but again having said that it's kind of we all know the problem with, you know, when you've got two parts going together and the pins and the holes slightly push things out. I think it's better to have it like this at the end of the day. But um, as I say, I think some newer modelers will struggle. But, um, I doubt if newer modelers will be picking up a massive project like this anyway. But uh, I'm going to get this front end glued in. As you can see, there is a there is a position that it will sit perfectly. And then if you rock it anyway slightly, it gets it goes out of position. So... I'm going to glue that front end in. I'm going to use extra thin. In fact, what I think I'll do, I will put some of my 
some of this glue in here just on this back edge because I don't want it all oozing out so I'll put some on that back edge and we can drop that in there so that will give it something to bite with there we go and then we could cover them with our extra thin and because we've got a nice big flat panel in the middle it's like a door that opens we have that nice big, nice big flat panel we can afford to make some glue marks because we don't have rivets in that area and you can see this is swallowing up this glue and there we go it's taking it all the way along there there we are and that should feed right out to the end on there give it a little nudge forward And there we go, as I say, I'll let that gel off, give it sort of three or four minutes, and then I'll probably put some tape on there so that I can pull it down and get this, because that's going to have to be sanded out, because that is like one big door there. We need to get rid of that seam completely. So I'm going to use the end of a rule just to push down so we know we're staying flush. As you can see, being really careful around these rivets. I'm just going to put a bit of tape on here. To hold it in fact I don't want to do that do I? I don't want to do that at all I don't want to hold it down I want it to sit where it wants and then pull it about afterwards so now that that glue is kind of gelled off I should be able to get the the tape to stick to that and stick to that it doesn't like sticking where there's rivets it's a longer piece there just like so and there we go There we are, so now let that dry. And if you notice, I'm not using super glue, I'm using plastic cement so that it welds. And then once that's dry, we can then deal with perhaps one side at a time or both sides together. But I think a bit of care taken in this area is gonna pay dividends. And I'm tempted, I'm gonna to have to put a piece of cardboard over here or something and then tape it on because stray fingers are gonna go in and start catching all these bits and pieces. And I don't wanna put the clear part on yet because that's gonna, just asking for trouble with finger marks and dust and scratches and whatever else. So I'll have to think of something I can put over there. But um, as I said before, if you're brave, if I want to do my next one, I may well do this. I may well get all this together, slide the floor out, build the cockpit and then slide the finished cockpit in. It saves all this risk of getting all this damage. But, um, anyway, but we need the floor to line everything up. So, but I mean, it's just the fit is quite frankly stunning. I mean, it is unbelievable. Look, it's just unbelievably good. Really, really impressive. Very, very impressive. And that little bit there, that bit there, that's my fault. There's a sprue nib in here. I don't know where they put the sprue nib in there. They could have put it out there. They put the sprue nib in here and I was sanding it and not really paying 100% attention to what I was doing because because of Jess and everything. I should be working on this one. I got by my head. But um, yeah, and I caught the edge of it with the sander. So that pro that's there is my problem. But a bit of super glue, a bit of Mr. Surface or whatever, and that'll be sorted. That'll be sorted absolutely fine. We've got a bit of a... Yeah, there's, see, there's the sprue. You can see where the sprue nib was in there. Look. You can see that little dark area here where I'm putting the knife. And that's, it seems a very strange place to put They could have put it there. You know, why put it there in the radius? So I'm just going to cut that away a bit more so we get an even gap around that door. That's better. In fact, it's got rid of that gap in the corner. That's much better. There we go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, make sure your sprue nibs are done, guys. So, moving ever forward, uh, you can see now I've glued along there and I've taped that joint and that's been there for about, I don't know, 20 minutes. So that glue is probably on, well on its way to curing. This plastic responds so well to Tamiya Extra Thin. It's just unbelievably good. Um, it glues beautifully. Uh, so, we'll get this tape off of here now. And pull that away. Stick that on there. 
and I'm going to pick this tape away from here. As you can see, I'm trying to keep it on panels with no rivets because it doesn't seem to want to stick the rivets. And we can see there we've got a bit of a pull away. So what we're going to do here is just hold this together. I'm going to use that pull away to our advantage. So where it's pulling away, I can sort of hold it together and just drop in there and let that capillary down. As you can see, it's the tiniest amount and I'm keeping it in between the rivets so we don't get any glue on the rivets because we don't want to damage them if we can help and we can see the glue is capillary all the way up there it's going really really well you can see what I'm doing hopefully you can see what I'm doing anyway um, you can see the glue is running up I don't really want it oozing out but if it does it's not a problem because we've got to work on the seam anyway and then back here drop in there and just put a drop in there trying to stay away from those rivets make sure you don't have too much glue because you don't want to get a big drop in there there we go let that run round and just let that go off as I say this is for the newer modelers out there let that go off and let it sort of gel and stuff before you start putting tape on it You can see there we can we can move it around and as I say if you take a straight edge you've got the end of a rule here and you push it on there and roll it it will kind of it will kind of make sure they end up sort of flush that's what you don't want to steps you don't want to step one way or the other okay so we can put a piece of tape on there now take that together that's that held in place if you notice, I'll leave it a few minutes because if you if you do it too quickly, while the liquid glue is still liquid, it will capillary under the tape and destroy your surface finish. You can see here we've got a tiny little bit of a step going on there. Just going to put some glue in there, make sure that's got glue in there because we don't want dry areas. We want it all to be nice and solid. We're going to fill the gaps with super glue anyway, so at the end of the day it's going to get glued. You can see there, I'm pushing that in. So I pull that around like so. And I think I've just seen that glue capillary under the tape. No, it didn't. I thought it did. keep that all together and that's that all nice and flush and then what we can do is let that gel off remove the tape and then we can go in from behind we can probably move this floor up we can probably move that floor up enough to get a paintbrush in there and get some glue in there from behind that's what I'm going to do but I'll take the tape off first just in case there's a gap and it'll rush through you put it under the tape and it'll ruin all your surface so that's what I've done on that side so we'll let this side gel off. We'll do the glue in the back. Well, I'll probably come back and show you how I do that. All right, so that's been on there. I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, whatever. So I'm going to take this tape away. I'm not going to worry about the tape at the front because I know it's really well. Oh, I better do just in case, hadn't I? Just in case. Sod's law states that while the camera's on, it will play out. So um, what I'm going to do is get the top off my extra thin. I've got a fairly decent sized paintbrush here. And I'm going to hold this in my hand. It's got the whole board in his hands. And I'm going to get in there with a the brush. Because I want to make sure I've got a nice, strong, really well welded together joint. And I'm going to brush in behind there, just like that. And I know now that that joint is good and strong. I can't see anything coming out. So there's nothing weeping out. So we can tape that together just to make sure it stays together so it gets some nice grip on that and pull that over like so and we have achieved what we wanted to achieve so I am going to call that a day I think for part two because I need to let this cure now um, what I do want to talk to you about is this rear panel here which I, I briefly mentioned but I will show you now what I'm talking about 
there's the floor in there now if I glued that floor in position I would fit this rear panel there is a hole you can see there's a peg on there on the end of that railing it goes into the hole in the back of there and basically if I put that in that hole and I see that around you can see that over here we have a great big step and also this is too high so if I put my finger down and I push that floor down you can see what happens it kind of pulls it all level and square and everything so that's what we need to do so putting that on is gonna we're gonna need to make sure all this is really dry and solid because we're gonna have to start doing some proper sort of clamping and I might even clamp through that window with a block on there and pull this down because um, it really needs to be down the fit is when you consider the shape you know, imagine making a a sphere like something like the Death Star from all these different panels and you've got joints like that. I mean, it is unbelievably good. Uh, I'm just over the moon with it. Yes, there are no tabs and no thing to help you align it all. But as I said earlier, that could be a good thing. Um, I think when I do my next one, I'm going to try and do this with the floor, like I said, and then I can pull the floor out and work on all the seams and everything, put some tabs on the inside, really strengthen up, and then not risk this, this cockpit thing. What I've done to save me breaking that cockpit, because when you turn it over like this and you start sanding, your fingers start straying, all of this in here is going to be so easy to snap off, and I really don't want to do that. So what I've done, I've got this piece of cardboard, cut a couple of angles on it on the back, and then that is going to slot in there, up underneath there, and then just pull the cardboard down the sides and put that tape on. I've got some 40 millimeter Tamiya tape, and that will hold that in place. And that is supported up here on the firewall and there on the bulkhead. So, therefore, my stray fingers, I won't go and break anything off while I'm holding it, sanding it, whatever. Obviously, I'll have to cut the tape back a bit so I can get there. But uh, my concern is, you know, you're, you're sanding away and your little finger goes astray. Before you know it, you've broken everything off. So there we are. So that can sit like that now, overnight. I'm going to let that go absolutely solid. And then um, I'll get these seams sorted. I probably won't film any of that because I don't think you really want to see that. But we'll get these seams sorted. And then I'll show you how it looks when it's got a little uh, thin cut of primer on it. So thank you for watching. And I'll see you back for part three. Um, this is... Yes, this one has been a little slow, I know, but we've covered a lot, um, and there's a lot in there that the, shall we say, the less confident modelers will find invaluable when they come to build their kit, because it's not uh, it's not like an Airfix kit where you just, an Airfix starter set, should I say, it's not just going to fall together. So, we've done, we've done here now, we've done up to step 18, I won't be putting the windows in just yet. I'm obviously going to check the fit of everything of this as that rear panel goes in. That's going to be a pretty major fitting, that rear panel there, because if it's too high, the next part going in won't fit. If it's too low, we'll have a big gap. If it's too far in, we'll have a big step. If it's too far forward, we have a step. If it's too far back, we have a step, and then that won't fit. So the other thing, as I said to you before, I think I've already mentioned this. This here, they're telling you to put this together. Um, now, I would suggest doing all this first and then put that together and slot that on top because these panels have got all these grooves in them. I think I've got them here. These panels have got all these grooves in them. I think I might have covered this already. That all of this sits in. So obviously you need all that structure to fit in there before you start. You, you need it all to fit. So basically I would glue that in just before you're going to glue that in and then you've got movement and everything. So it's nice and nice and um, the glue's nice and soft so it can move around and then we can carry on but this this here doing this is the bit i'm looking forward to most of all in this kit it's fabricating all of this this structure up and believe me it's going to be massive it's going to be absolutely huge and then we come along and we add the cockpit to the front of it that's going to be a lot of fun <laughs> mm. we shall see and then i'll add those sticks in then because as you know i've already added the uh those parts in so um, once we get the roof in properly, I'll add those sticks and then we'll fit the, the clear parts. But um, yeah, so really looking forward to doing that bit. So that'll be in part three. 
and I will see you for that one very, very soon. Quite when it'll be, I don't know, because all this going on with Jess and everything. Back to the vets tomorrow and la 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 la. So, see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.